Today we're going to be looking at the last statement of Jesus Christ from the cross while he was being crucified. I'd like to invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 23, and I'm going to be reading verses 44 through 49. Luke 23, verse 44 through 49. Here's what the Word of God tells us. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land. Until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who, the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Let's join together in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have revealed to us the fullness of your love and the fullness of the Father's love. And today, as we examine these final words of yours, we see the significance for each and every one of us, the hope that you have entrusted into our spirit through the hope that you expressed on the cross of Calvary. Lord, we just pray for the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts deeply and to change us radically, that we may truly let our light shine for you as we live out the truth of your word. It's in your name we pray this, amen. Well, today we come again to the realization that death is no stranger to us. In fact, as we watch the nightly news, we have accounts of people that have been killed, people that have died, and over and over again, we're confronted with the reality of death. I also realize that there are people that don't want to acknowledge this reality. They would just as soon avoid the fact that they're going to die someday. But we know because death has touched each of our lives in some significant way. Maybe a family member, maybe a friend, but you have been impacted in some way through death. Jesus came to die. It was his mission. I think often of the artist who painted the picture of the manger scene in Bethlehem when Jesus was born. And there's the baby in the manger, Mary and Joseph next to the manger. And overhead is that beautiful bright star shining right down on the manger. And as the focus is on that manger, what we see the artist portrays is a shadow over the manger of Christ. We see in the shadow a cross, a cross that has been formed over the Christ child. And the artist ad adequately portrays the reality that Jesus came for that very purpose. He came to give his life as a ransom so that we might be redeemed. That we might know the grace of God and the mercy of God. Now we know that Jesus told his disciples over and over again, he foretold his death. He said, I'm going to be betrayed. The Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men. Jesus tried to impress upon his followers the reality, I'm going to die, whether you want to accept that or not. We know that Jesus was betrayed by one of his own disciples, Judas. I believe that Jesus was also betrayed by that crowd that on Palm Sunday that we celebrate today, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, that when Jesus rode in and the, the crowd was shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, we know that he was betrayed just three short days later when they cried, crucify him. Today as we encounter Christ, the Son of God, 
hanging from the cross on Calvary, being crucified. We're again reminded of the treatment that he received, the torture that was too gruesome to even begin to describe. Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah 53 tells us that we hid our faces from him. Some say that the the beatings that he received and the treatment uh, resulted in, in being so brutal, so gruesome that he was unrecognizable. People did not even recognize him from what he once was. Now, you and I have the privilege of having the Word of God and having the full revelation of the Word of God so that we can see what the Gospel writers wrote and and revealed and we can be comforted. We know the rest of the story. We know how everything ends. But it's important for us today as we hear Jesus saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It's important to realize that before his physical death, when he did actually die, he surrendered or submitted himself into the hands of the Father. It's important for us to realize again who's in control. Jesus made it very clear. He said in John chapter 10, verses 15 and 17, I lay my life down and I will take it up again. See, Jesus had this all planned. The Father had it all planned. The Holy Spirit, all three together, had this all planned. And Jesus was in control. Even after six hours of hanging on that cross, experiencing crucifixion, Jesus determined the time of his death. Jesus, when he said, it is finished, paid in full, then he commits himself, he releases his spirit into the hands of the Father. Now I believe there's a life lesson for each one of us, a life lesson that we must hold on to the rest of our life. You see, in this act, this final act, these final words of Jesus from the cross before he physically died, he revealed that death is nothing more for the believer than a door whereby we go through the door of death into the presence of God, whereby we are admitted or ushered into into the glory of God. Think about that for just a minute. There are many people who are afraid to die, many people who have that ongoing fear of, you know, what if I die and what's going to happen? Well, for the believer in Jesus Christ, Jesus sets the example When he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, he's saying to all of his followers, you do the same. Commit your spirit into the hands of God. I'm so thankful for the Apostle Paul when he said, to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. We can be comforted today in knowing that if we were to die in Christ, our spirit would be immediately ushered into the presence of God. Our body would be buried and, and, or cremated or whatever process would take place. That doesn't matter. The physical doesn't matter. The spirit is what is eternal. Solomon made it very clear in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11. He said, God has put eternity, he has set eternity in the hearts of mankind. Solomon also said, in the end... Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7, in the end, the dust or the body returns to the ground it came from, but the spirit returns to God who gave it. And then Solomon says in verse 14, God will bring every deed into judgment. That's the reality. God is God. We may think we have a better plan or a better idea, but He established, He created, and He ordered the universe. Now, there are people that deny God. They deny the the reality of an eternal state after physical death. But again, we have to come back to who's in control, who's in charge. God has said He will judge every deed. Each of us has received an eternal spirit, The spirit upon physical death will return to God and God will then make a determination. 
you see, Jesus is making it clear, unless we are in him by faith, we have no hope. We have only fear to look forward to. There are people that believe in reincarnation. They say that, well, when I die, I'm going to come back as another form, maybe an animal or another person. There are people that are are deceived by, by this disillusionment. And Jesus is saying, get rid of that that. That thinking, it's not true. It's a lie. Jesus wants us to realize that we are to commit our spirit, our eternal spirit, into the hands of God. We are to hold on to the truth no matter what anybody else says or what any philosophy or or teacher may try to convince us of. You see, God made the rules, He'll keep the rules. And he says there's no exceptions. He provided the way himself that we might know the truth and the truth might set us free. I love the words of uh, Pastor Chuck Swindoll when he said, unless you're prepared to die, you cannot really begin to live. Think about that. Unless you're prepared to die and meet God, how can you live in peace or in joy or fulfillment? You, you really just can't. But Jesus, in his final words from the cross, is saying you can live well knowing that you are in the hands of God each and every moment, and you can die well. Because of your faith in Christ, you are in the hands of God for all eternity. Think with me for just a moment. This life is a matter of years. I heard of a man from Lighthouse Christian Church that lived 103 years. He was part of this fellowship, part of Seaside. He was uh, identified as Mr. Seaside. He, he, He was involved in a lot of people's lives. 103 years. We would say, now that's a pretty long time. But can you put a comparison between 103 years and forever? Eternity, when there is no time limit God wants us to keep that in perspective we live a short time and this life will soon be over we need to know today if we were to die physically would our spirit our eternal spirit go to be with Jesus Christ in glory because of our faith in him and in him alone I want to live well and I want to die well By the grace of God. I heard about a tribe in Africa. And these uh, these, uh, Christian people in this tribe, when a believer in Jesus dies, they don't say that person is departed. Instead, they say that person has arrived. Think about that for a moment. We often say the person passed or the person died or or the person is, is no longer with us. Well, the reality is they may have left us, but they've arrived home like Paul says we're home with the Lord I think of Psalm 23 when David said that uh, I will dwell in the house of the Lord how long forever see there's the eternal component that Jesus uh, reiterates when he says father into your hands I commit my spirit I like to say that true believers in Christ born again by the Holy Spirit they graduate into glory When I leave this body, my body, that shell is left behind, but my spirit goes to be with God Almighty, and I have graduated into glory. I've crossed that finish line. I've finished the course, and I've run into the arms of Jesus. Now, I just need to ask you today, do you have that same comfort? Do you have that same assurance? Jesus wants you to know in the depth of your heart that you're in God's hands and you're secure with Him. Before I conclude, I just want to bring our attention back to verse 45 of Luke 23. Because here we see something supernatural occurs that is very significant. There's a sign from God that we can't overlook. And what we read in verse 45 of of, uh, Luke chapter 23, we read here that the curtain of the temple... The temple in Jerusalem, the curtain was torn in two. Now Matthew in his gospel, Matthew 27 verse 50, he tells us this. 
At that moment, the moment that Jesus committed his, his spirit into the hands of the Father, at that very moment, simultaneously, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, we know that the, the natural way that someone would tear something is you'd tear it from the bottom and, and then it would rip up. Well, see, this was a supernatural act of God. The Father was revealing in the death of His Son, Jesus Christ, that He was opening the way. From the Father down to humanity, He was opening the way to God. You see, this curtain in the temple, we're told that it was the thickness of a man's fist. Now that's pretty thick. That's like three, three and a half inches. That is something that you just don't take hold of and tear. But when God decides to do something, well, nothing's going to stand in the way. And the Father, at the moment of Christ's death, tore that curtain between the holy place and the most holy place, or what we would say is the holy of holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was. From the top to the bottom, it was ripped wide open. I believe the Father was saying, through my Son, the Lamb of God and His supreme sacrifice, the way is now open for all people to come. You don't have to make sacrifices anymore. You come in faith in the name of Jesus and you come before the throne of God in Christ as your only Savior. The Father gave us a supernatural sign which was a, a divine intervention, a revelation we might say, that Christ is our access to the throne of God. I think it's also interesting that we note that it was at that precise time, the ninth hour, after Jesus had been on that cross for six hours, from nine o'clock in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon. You see, it was precisely at three o'clock in the afternoon that the shofar, the ram's horn, was blown from the trumpet and that a lamb was slain as the afternoon sacrifice. Now, do you think it's a coincidence that Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb, was also died? He also died at that very moment when the priest in the temple was sacrificing that lamb? No, it's very significant that we, re we realize God fulfilled his plan at that very moment. And Jesus was the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. So we can come personally, individually, to the Father in the name of Jesus. Let me ask you, what is your eternal hope? Do you have hope in Christ alone? Have you put your faith in Him? Do you know that you belong to Him? Do you know that your life right now is in His hands? and will be for all eternity. There may be some here today that fear death. As you look deep into your spirit, you would say, you know what, I don't know what would happen if I were to die today, or tomorrow, or next week. I don't know whether I would go to heaven. I would hope so. Well, Jesus is saying to you today, you can know so. You need to know so. You need to know that your assurance is in Him and His complete sacrifice. Are you willing to trust Him today and put your faith in Him? You see, it's not just about how you live, it's about how you die. Will you die under the blood of the Lamb of God? Will you die knowing that your sins are forgiven, that you are cleansed by the grace of God because your faith in Him? And we must be prepared. Once we put our faith in Christ, we must be prepared to then give our life for Him. Jesus said, you know what? If they do this to me, you can expect them to do this to you as well. I think back on John Huss, who was one of the Christian martyrs back in the 14th, uh, 1400s. I think of his testimony. He was not willing to turn back from his faith in Christ in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. When he was condemned, John Huss was condemned by the Council of Constance in 1415. The bishop in charge of making that final decision ended with these words. 
Now we commit your soul to the devil. But John Huss replied, I commit my spirit into your hands, Lord Jesus Christ. Unto thee I commend my spirit, which thou hast redeemed. John Huss was then burned at the stake, burned alive for his faith and testimony. He finished well. He finished in triumph, in victory, knowing that he belonged to Christ and Christ belonged to him. You see, he was fully submitted. Just as Jesus fully submitted his spirit to the Father, John Huss stood firm to the end, giving his very life as a testimony that I will stand for Christ no matter what anyone does for me. Now Jesus gives us these final words of assurance. In Matthew 28, verse 20, we find our comfort, our hope, and our promise. Jesus says to his followers, Surely, or truly, I am with you always, even, even to the end of the age. Meaning that he would be with us until he returns in glory, or until we go through the door of death and enter into glory, graduate into glory. Jesus promises to be with us. And I want to leave you with those words of encouragement. As we've looked at the different statements of Christ from the cross, and the one today was the seventh statement, Jesus' words on the cross. They're words that give us promise and hope. He set the example so that we could live for him each and every day until that day when we're taken home to glory, or he returns in all his glory, and we're received up into glory, and we'll be with him forever. I trust that you have embraced Jesus Christ by faith, and that you are willing now to live for him and for his glory. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, as we have looked at these final words that you have declared from the cross, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, Jesus, they give us such, such hope and promise because we know that we too, by faith in you, can commit our eternal spirit into your hands and know that the Father accepts us because of you and your sacrifice. Lord, we thank you as the Apostle Paul said that you became sin or a sin sacrifice that we might become the righteousness of God and that the Father now sees us through you and your righteousness. Lord, we thank you that we are children of God and we can live triumphantly in victory no matter what anyone might do to us, no matter what persecution might, might come our way. Even as John Huss gave testimony when he was burned at the stake, his faith was alive and real and took him into eternity. He died well. He finished well. He stayed the course on the, on the highway of faith. Lord, may we also stay the course and be found faithful to the end. Now I pray for each person here. Lord, you know where they're at with you. And I pray that if there's anyone here that has never truly accepted you and put their faith in you, if they're afraid to die and, and go through the door of death, Lord, right here, right now, I pray for the Holy Spirit to minister to them and that they would accept you by faith and be born again by the Spirit and have everlasting life. That they might know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. Lord, I pray for that person or persons right now, right here, that they would make that commitment to you and that they would be willing to share that uh, testimony, that the, the, the decision that they made today, that they would share it with others as a witness that now they are a child of God, forgiven of their sins and desiring to live for Jesus each and every day. We pray this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.